Hi there, I'm Michael. Um, today I'm going to be working on a few computers. The first is a, a desktop computer. Um, let's see, switch to POV. So it's it was built by a client. Um, when they told me they had built their own computer, I assumed it was new parts, but when it got here, um, it's pretty obvious it's uh, it's used stuff. Um, the motherboard in it is a MSI Z77A-GD65 Gaming. I'm not sure about the processor yet, but what it's doing when you turn it on, it powers on, but on the screen, you end up with a black screen. It is sending a video signal to the screen, though, and I can tell that because here in a, here in a, a second or a few seconds, the um, the light down here is going to turn blue. So it is send, sending a signal. It's just it's uh, it's black. Um, the other thing that happens. There's codes down here on the motherboard. I don't know if y'all can, yeah. So right now it's at 62, it changes. It's gonna settle on, um, I wanna say 36 or 37. Yeah, there it is, 34, 33, 34. Um, those codes, uh, where it stops there, it uh, it means that the, C, uh, the CPU is having trouble initializing, and it would, when it gets to 37, 38, that goes more into the uh, the chipset um, kind of initialization, but it doesn't go further than that. So there's the black screen and the blue light. So yeah, they. I asked them about it after they dropped it off. I, I texted them, um, and they they tell me that it's it's all certified working components um, with a warranty. So they bought them from somewhere. Um, certified to work with a warranty and that's as far as I uh, as much as I know um, at the moment Let's see, taking the glass off so it was it was put together a little bit unusually um, the cooler um, the fans on the wrong side typically you would have it going that way um, to bring you know cool air from the front with these fans which I think they actually set it up in reverse it looks to me like this these these will be blowing air let me see Let's see if it's turning that way yeah it looks like they're set to blow air out the front which that's unusual but it's not really a problem it's just not the typical way to do these things the RAM appears to be incorrectly there's a graphics card Looks like a pretty basic one. It doesn't require um, power from the uh, from the power supply. It's just getting it from the motherboard. Um, there's also this, which I'm thinking. Oh, it's a it's a power switch uh, that you can access from inside of the case. I I don't think I've seen that before. Um, they also put the uh, the the, um, the fan hub here and that's usually on the on the back here it, it's it's not a problem it's just a little bit unusual but I figured um, let's uh, let's take it apart a little bit um, what I'm I'm thinking may have happened is the CPU they got isn't compatible with the motherboard okay so RGB and fan so it's an RGB slash fan controller and you would typically plug this into the motherboard so that the motherboard uh, sees a fan and it works. They have another fan connected here but it's going somewhere else to the CPU fan. That's again not really an indication of a problem it's just unusual but yeah let's get this cooler master off. Hey little smoke I did see the new AM5 socket I'm, I'm excited um, I wish I had live streamed it um, a couple of nights ago. I didn't think to do it until it was already going and I was way too busy uh, that evening. But yes, looks looks very good. I'm I'm uh, <laughs> I'm I'm also excited to see what Intel uh, has to show us. Um, their their launch event is scheduled for September 28th. And that's the release date for the AMD stuff, which I'm sure was a complete coincidence. But I wouldn't be surprised if Intel um, switches up and announces their stuff a little bit earlier than they expected and maybe launches them earlier than they, they really wanted. 
happen to. Blackman0604. Let's see. Someone computer. It is, yes, it is It is a, a client's computer. Um, Philip asked, uh, is it mine or a client's? Yeah, I, most, almost all the computers you see me work on are client's computers. I don't usually show my stuff. Although I suppose I could. I mean, I wouldn't be against it. It's just, yeah. Uh, okay, so plenty of thermal compound. Looks like it's on there good. The um, some of the uh, some of the nuts came loose, though I don't think it was I don't think it was tightened all the way down to begin with, which again wouldn't cause this problem. But you know it's 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 a it's a computer build by a uh, inexperienced uh, builder. What I'm going to do is just put these back in here before I go any further. Oh, if I can. Yeah, but I'm I'm curious as to the um the type of uh, type of CPU. I looked up the motherboard already. It's uh, it's socket 1155. And what can happen is, if you don't know the uh, the compatibility issues, people um, e even with modern modern computers, they'll put a CPU with the motherboard that's just not supported. Or if it is supported, it has to be um, there has to be a, a BIOS upgrade in order to make it fully supported. Hey Chris, good afternoon to you. A little smoke. Yes, they did switch to pin uh, pin grid array. And if you're wondering what that is, the um, the AM4, the previous AMD CPUs used um, uh, what was it called? No, it's LGA versus pin grid array. I, I think I said that backwards. Um, the the pins are on the motherboard instead of on the CPU. The CPUs just have um, uh, pads, pins on the motherboard. Kind of connect to. Well, not connect to, but like push into to make the connection. Uh, okay. So grab a paper towel and clean this thing off a little bit. So this is a Core i7, I think it says 2780K, it's very small though. Can someone look up a, a Core i7 27? 80k. Let's see if that's a CPU from Intel. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the thermal compound from here too, and I'll put on fresh. Assuming we can get this thing to boot up and give us video. Yep, I've got some on my fingers. Well, it is giving video, but it's a black screen, so it's not uh, it's not completely lacking a video signal. Uh, twenty twenty seven hundred K Blackman zero six zero four says. I really think that's a twenty seven. It looks really looks like an eight to me. Is there a twenty seven eighty K? That did not bring up anything. Let's put Intel on that. An Intel 2780K. No, I guess it's 2700K and I'm just uh, 
my my eyes just aren't good enough but that makes sense so 2700 K is what it is now does the motherboard support that I already did a Google search for the motherboard um, we need compatibility and I'm gonna do control F for search 27 2700 K yes so it does support it um, It's a Sandy Bridge processor. Compatible devices. Oh, I see. So CPU 2700K. And I believe this is a link to the BIOS required to make it work. download that. Oh, I got a link that it's not found. Uh, okay, well let's go back to drivers and downloads. BIOS. Uh, most recent BIOS is from 2013, November 14th. Let's see if that download link works. Yes, it does. Okay. Alright, how to flash the BIOS. Does this thing support flashback because it, it could be that the um it could be that the bios on the motherboard is too old to support this processor although i kind of doubt that um back to compatibility Because the Sandy Bridge would have been supported, it would have been like the one of the first CPUs to come and be supported by by this uh, this motherboard. Hmm. Another possibility is that the graphics card is having a problem, and this twenty uh, seven hundred K has built in um, has built in graphics. So I'm actually going to try. Uh, okay, I'm actually going to try taking out the graphics card, and we're going to. Okay, that fell. We're gonna we're gonna plug the HDMI cable directly into the motherboard and see if we get uh, more than just a black screen out of it. Okay, so one screw holding it in. I'm pressing on the eject thing on the motherboard. Let's, let's the card come out. And what is this thing? Mm, I think this is a 1050 Ti. It's got GV. N105 TOC 4GD. It, it makes sense that it's a 1050 Ti, or maybe a 1050. Was a 1050 a thing with four gigabytes? Uh, and I think I think this may be a little bit newer. If that's what it is, then then the motherboard. But that's fine. Uh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's turn it on and see if we get video with the uh, with the graphics card out. Uh, it's, it's already good. All right, so should have HDMI. Yes. Uh, POV. wind them up first thing check mem maybe but i can't remember the last time i saw a memory problem cause video signal to be sent but a black screen it just the ram's in there um you may be right but it just occurs to me to try this first Okay, so HDMI connected, power connected. We're not going to worry about the uh, the CPU not have a cooler on it. Uh, at least not quite yet. You can kind of... Oh, we got video. We got video. Okay. E EFI shell version. What is this? That kind of... That kind of looked like Linux to me, and I don't I don't know what uh, what um, 
drives are in here. I didn't even open the other side yet. I guess we can go ahead and do that. Let's go look. This system is too old to have an M.2 slot on the motherboard, so it's got to have it's got to have a, a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch hard drive or solid state drive in order to boot up and work. But that's good. We got video. Okay. There is a solid state drive. It's kind of loose down here at the bottom. Samsung drive. A 860 Evo. Okay, we can we can put that in there a little bit better. There's a there's almost certainly a two and a half inch drive holes in this three and a half inch drive. Um, bay tray thing. Okay, you come out. Yes. Okay. So yeah, we would want to put it like that and hopefully screw it in. Let's go ahead and do that. What's going on, chat? It's not connected to data. That's true. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Um, probably because they were trying to make this work. They probably connected and reconnected it so many times. And if you can, if you don't even get um, an image on screen other than black, <laughs> having having a data drive is your your least of your worries. We'll get a couple of thin threaded screws here. Secure the drive down. A little smoke, you have a question. Oh, Black Man 0604, don't judge so harshly. They did things uh, unusually, but I don't think they made any mistakes, like build-breaking mistakes. It can all be fixed. It may just be that that graphics card um, doesn't work. wind them up. Was it working before? No. This is a this is a build that they put together. And I'm not sure why they they bought used parts for it, but they did. Maybe they got good deals, or maybe they were trying to keep uh, the components out of landfills. Uh, I don't see a SATA cable back here to plug in. Let's see. And there's not one plugged in here. I heard something roll. It sounded like a a screw rolled in the case. Oh, or is that what I heard? It really sounded like a screw. <laughs> Aha! Yeah, it's there's there's something something in there. Oh, or am I just hearing this? I think I may just be hearing this. Okay. Get them a SATA cable. Uh, where did I put my SATA cables? Or is that the screw that I heard? And I didn't even hear it come out. I think that was it. Okay, so SATA data plugged into the drive, and we should be able to bring this up here and plug it into the front. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, so we got a bunch of SATAs labeled 1 through 8. They should all be the same. Just plug it into one of them. Okay. Well, I think we can go ahead and put the cooler back on. And then we'll deal with turning it back on and getting Windows installed. They bought Windows from Microsoft, which I was like, oh no, don't do that. I can get it cheaper. And they had already opened it. But good news is she's a student, so she got it for like 15 bucks or something. Uh, okay. Cooler. Thermal compound. The SSD was not connected to the motherboard, no. Which makes me wonder what it is we saw, you know, on that video, the video that came up. It looked kind of Linuxy to me, but there's not a drive connected to the to the motherboard, so I'm I'm not sure what that uh, what that tells us at the moment. Okay, so P-sized amount on the chip, and then we'll just set this right on top and see about screwing it in. I'm doing a little bit of downward pressure and just doing a couple of turns to get each of them started. Then I'll go back and tighten them down. Right? Chris, did you did you see that video or can you run it back and look at it? It looked Linuxy to me, but it may have just been coming from the motherboard, which is a little bit worrying. Fear of, of being electrocuted? Ah, hadn't happened to me yet. <laughs> yeah, building computers is, is pretty damn safe. I mean, it's all, it's all grounded. Every component, as far as I know, is all grounded. So any kind of electrical mishap would go to ground. I have yet to be even a little bit shocked by a computer. And I've been doing this a long time. Often. All right, so that's back on. Um, we can probably redo the cabling and make it so that the air goes that way, but the way she the way she did it, I mean, it's not really a problem. It'll bring cool in, air in from over here just because that's all it can come from and go out the top and out the uh, out the front but it's just not, not typical it's a cooler master okay I want to make it go the other way though just because It's more typical. I may have to sw switch these around. They look like they're pushing air out the front, but I can check that. Okay, so we got fan. Sorry, hands in the way. difficult to get to. Wow. That is a pain. I just does 
so I don't want to go. But it's three pin RGB, and it's a f uh, it's a three pin RGB RGB on the um, on the hub. While whereas this is four, which I don't think those two things are compatible. I may be wrong. The board is twelve years old. Okay, I thought it was a little bit newer than that. I thought it was eight or nine. But yeah, that it probably is. Yeah, wow, and it's older than I thought. Um, all right, well, let's turn it back on. So if we get that same image on screen, and we'll worry about the uh, worry about the graphics card a little bit later. Is this really a power switch? not. It looks like a power switch. All right, computer come back on. Video immediately. Ooh, yeah. E, uh. Oof. Okay, I <laughs> moved the cable a little bit and it got better. We have a, uh, we have a, improper boot device detected uh, message on screen. So what we're going to do is give it a, a copy of Windows 10 on a flash drive and we're going to reboot. See if this thing, well, it would help if I plugged in the mouse and keyboard. See if this thing will install Windows. Where's my other where's my other keyboard mouse dongle? Yeah, let's see if this is keyboard. No, that's mouse. I am missing a keyboard and mouse dongle. See my keyboard dongle. Sorry, y'all. I bumped the, bumped the microphone. All right, let's plug in a different keyboard, I suppose. Blackman zero six zero four says primitive RGB controller. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, Chris, I'm not very familiar with Linux either. It just kind of looked Linuxy to me. It's just, why did it show that even for a little bit? It's kind of weird. Keyboard. Get this thing rebooting. I'll turn over here. I just turn it off and turn it back on. But we do need a keyboard anyway. All right. Control delete. Okay, reboot. Let me press delete and F2 and get into the BIOS. All right, so um, it's got version 25.2 of the BIOS. Version full version number is E7751IMS, and it thinks it's. Friday, December 20th of 2080. Uh, okay. See, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Mm. Uh, let's 
see. Uh, standard, eco, utilities, security. Uh, I wonder if, does F7 take us to advanced? No, settings, okay. Settings, boot. Oh, come on, go into boot. Ugh. All right, hard drive boot priority. It sees a Samsung drive, almost certainly the, uh, the 860. Yeah, so control delete to reboot, and it should just boot to um, the USB flash drive and start the Windows install. Okay, so I've, I see this sometimes. This is not ind indicative of a problem just by itself. Whenever you boot to um, a Windows USB, some systems will just have corrupt um, graphics. But we should start seeing the um, the circular um, progress spinny dot thingy. Yeah. So it <laughs> it uh, it most of the graphics got better. There's a block over there, and then there's spinny dots. Okay. So we're we're going into Windows. Next, install. Okay, I'm going to say I don't have a product key, and we're going to use hers that she bought. It's in here. I'll, I'll put that in later. But it's Windows 10 Home. So I don't have a product key, and we're going to tell it Windows 10 Home next. Accept, next, custom. Uh, yeah, there's the 500 gigabyte um, drive. Blank. Click next, and it will set up the partitions for us. I'm curious about the uh, the direction of the airflow, though. Just by looking at it, I think it's blowing air out the front. Piece of paper and do a little, little test. See if it's pushed away or drawn in. It's drawn in. Okay. So these, I mean, t usually those are those are the other direction, but what about these guys? Yeah, so blowing air that way, blowing air that way, and you know, I could just switch this over to the other side, and that would be blowing air that way. Um, I think that'd be fine. It's unusual, but it'll work. So Philip, a little while ago, asked about a 1660 Super, and um, Blackman0604 said it's it's good for 1080p gaming. I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, that's actually what's in um, the streaming computer at the moment. Not that I've gamed on it or anything. My main monitor here in front is a, is a 4K, but the others are um, 1080p. And, yeah. Mm. Let me see. I'm going to set this up and put it off to the side a little bit. <laughs> Brought the keyboard with me. No, I don't want to quit. Okay, here we go. Restarting. I'm gonna switch my camera to uh, to a tripod. Okay, so yeah, booting into Windows. We're not booting into Windows. It's gonna start detecting hardware. Okay, we good about there? Yeah.
I've also got two laptops to, to work on. Um, they're both Asus laptops. One's a Core i5, one's a Core i7. The Core i5 is a little bit older than the, uh, the Core i7, um, but they both have hard drives in them. Um, so they, the client basically asked me to speed them up. So solid state drive upgrades for them and maybe RAM if it's, um, if it's not too expensive and um, there's, uh, there's a place to put them. They, uh, yeah, a little smoke, they, they bought it used. Um, they bought all the parts used, apparently. Um, and I don't know if that was to save money or, or what the reason was. Okay, so it rebooted. Um, I'm going to try putting their graphics card in, in my diagnostic computer and see if I get video from it. So I need to shut it down. Okay, um, United States, yes. Uh, US keyboard, no second keyboard. I'm gonna tell it I don't have an internet connection. If you, if you tell Windows 10 that you have an internet connection, it'll insist on uh, you connecting your Microsoft account, which I don't wanna do. Okay, and I don't know her name. Um, put custom. Custom computer, no password, and turn off everything but diagnostic data and location. Not now to Cortana. Okay, now I can go ahead and connect it up with an internet, with an ethernet cable. It looks like they added a Wi-Fi adapter, though. Okay. Internet's connected. Yeah, Chris, I um, I was watching um, hot news this morning and. I think the uh, the twelve four hundred K is like two hundred dollars, or I, I don't remember exactly what the price was, but the Intel CPUs uh, and actually the AMDs right now, uh, the current generation is marked down you know one hundred and fifty two hundred bucks from what uh, what it was retail, because you know everyone knows that new chips are coming out from AMD and Intel. Well, so far so good. Getting this far is uh, a good sign, and it's connected to the internet because it's going in updating drivers. Let's go get uh, go get Nine Night or Chrome using Nine Night. You still have to click through that bullshit that Edge puts up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ninite.com. Chrome. If you don't know Ninite, um, go check it out. N i n i t e dot com. It um, lets you download all these programs for free. You just check what you want and click Get Your Ninite and run the little installer. And it just goes and gets it all. Hey, a little smoke. It's a little guy waving. 
cool. I've got some new uh, some new stickers I need to put up, um, or little em emojis or whatnot for um, for chat. I'm not sure exactly how how to, how that works. So I've, I've got a friend who uh, who made me a few. Haven't looked that far into it. Okay, that got done. So now we have Chrome here. All right. Uh, see. It's a Z77A dash GD65. We'll put drivers. That should link us over. Oh, I did that on. <laughs> I did that on. Uh, on Edge. Let's copy that and close out of Edge and do that in Chrome. Uh, yeah, let's accept those cookies. Absolutely. I downloaded the BIOS on my on my streaming computer, but it makes more sense to have it here, so I'll click that to download it. Uh, we can also right-click on Start and go to Device Manager and go look at any devices that need updating. Simple PCI communication controller and an unknown device. Those are probably chipset-related things. Let's see. Hardware. Copy. Okay, so people talking in HP community and uh, Lenovo people talking about it. It could be an Intel Smart Connect technology driver. Well, let's go back here and look. Drivers, Windows 10 64 bit, and. <laughs> All they've got listed is uh, an audio driver. Uh, let's go ahead and get it. I'm going to go back to Windows 7 64-bit. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's more here. Um, Intel chipset driver. Let's get that and the Intel management engine driver. The BIOS, I'm going to right-click on and extract. And I'm going to copy it right over to my USB flash drive so we can reboot and update the BIOS, assuming it needs to be updated. I don't remember which what, what the version was when we looked in the BIOS. Shelled out 20 bucks for driver easy for this. I, I don't I don't recommend any of the driver um, updating softwares. Definitely need the Intel chipset. Get it running. And yes, by the way, you can install drivers intended for older operating systems on newer operating systems. They may occasionally say, hey, this isn't intended for this, but if you just extract out the driver and then go into Device Manager and point it at the folder where the driver is, it almost always works. Little smoke. Um, this is MSI motherboard. Um, I don't think they have anything like uh, Armory Crate that Aces has. I could be wrong about that though. Are you really still still extracting that? Yeah, we can go back and get the management engine going as well. The Intel chipset is just sitting there, not doing anything, apparently. At least it's not showing doing anything. Oh, here we go. It took it a while, but it came up. This is the chipset driver. Yep. And next, continue. And Intel chipset's still going. Let's go look. Yeah, that, that took care of one of them. There's still this unknown device, though. 
Next. No, don't restart. So the unknown device, it's showing up as this. And when I did a search for Google, it said this. Some kind of ACPI thing. Let's see what the HP community is talking about with it. Unknown device. Okay, so the graphics driver is updating. That's what that blacked out for. Yeah, so this is also talking about Intel Smart Connect. I'm going to click this and see if we can get it. Nah, the link's, link looks broken. I'm going to copy the name of it and put it into a Google search and see what comes up. <laughs> so you can, get, you can get it from Driver Guide. Hmm. What about this one? Save link as, maybe? Yeah, here we go. Download. Uh, can't be downloaded securely. That's fine. Let's keep that. Show in folder, and we will run it. And this is from HP, but it has a good chance of working. Okay, so it's going to extract it here. Okay, did that work? No, nope, it's still there, but let's try it. Right click, update driver, eh, search didn't do shit. Uh, update driver, browse computer, and I'm going to point it to that folder on the C drive. So it's SW setup, that guy. And then driver, maybe? Yeah, I did it. So the installer didn't work, but uh, pointing it directly at the folder where it extracted the, uh, the files, that got it close out of that. Alright, let's go see what Windows is up to as far as updates. Right clicking on start, go to settings and update and security. Yeah, it's already getting updates for Windows. That looks good. Alright, back up. So if uh, here, here's where you put in your 25 digit code for Windows. Uh, if you come to settings, if this is here, you click it and there's a link to change product key. So that's be where you type it in. I'll do that later. But this is looking good. Um, stable so far. We haven't really put it under a whole lot of stress, but it's it's looking good. Little Smoke MSI Dragon. Um, okay, maybe they do have a they do have a, a driver updating program called Dragon. Yeah, actually, I kind of remember that. I think we did an MSI motherboard a couple weeks ago uh, in a new computer, and it was MSI Dragon. But it's it's cool. It's it's got the updates. Uh, let's uh, let's see. What can we do? Let's try putting their graphics card in my diagnostic computer and see if it works. Move y'all to my forehead. Y'all ready? Yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. I've got some printers I have. Uh, I have to sell. I'm taking up space over here. Uh, so take out the one that's in here. And this is a very basic graphics card that's in here at the moment. I don't know what it is. I think it's a old Radeon card. What is this thing? Yeah, it's a HD8570. Two gigabyte card. Very basic, but that's all I need for this diagnostic computer. Okay. Graphics card in. And HDMI. the different input. Switch to HDMI and we'll turn this thing on. See if we get video. Hmm. 
Nothing so far. It is on. The fans on it are spinning. But yeah, we got no video. Yeah, so I think it's just a bum graphics card. Uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty good test. Back off. I'll put my basic graphics card back in and we'll give it a try. I'm expecting this to work. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just a bum graphics card. And they said it's under warranty. It's used, yes, but under warranty, and they'll probably just get a replacement from them. And that's going to boot into Windows. Okay. Back to the display port. Let me put this thing screw back in. <laughs> this uh, this diagnostic computer was my my main work computer for the longest time. It's um it's got a six core Xeon CPU in it, and the motherboard's an Asus P six T Deluxe version one. Very old. I I initially built the system that this motherboard and, uh, came from back in two thousand nine, if I remember right. So it's been a while. Still works fine though six cores running at um, 4 gigahertz. All right, where are we at over here? Go back and look at settings and updates. Uh, yeah, install those. I, I don't know why Windows 10 sometimes waits for you to click install and other times it just does it. Uh, USA asks Asus good laptop to buy. Uh, they're okay. I, I don't recommend Asus um, laptops um, for like repairability reasons. It's because it's more difficult to get parts, replacement parts for them. Dell's and HP's is what I generally tell people to buy. Yes, they have problems, but when you have problems, it's much easier to get replacement parts. Sammy says Fujitsu the best. I think I've seen a few Fujitsu um, laptops, but not in a long time. I don't think they, they sell them in America anymore. Do they sell them overseas as well, Sammy? Or still? Okay. Um, so this computer, um, it, it seems fine. I still need to swap around the uh, the direction of the fans but um, I think this it's good to go yeah so we could just move on to the two aces laptops see about um, getting them upgraded or we could keep we could keep doing this The, um, the copy of Windows went and got the latest time. It's it's on the wrong time time zone though. Right clicking on the clock you get to adjust time and date and we are in the central time zone in the US. <laughs> A little what about compact? Yeah, compact, exactly. I actually saw a compact um, branded computer from HP not too long ago, and it was it was like three or four years old, which I thought they'd stopped branding things compact a long time before that. Let's see. Okay. What do y'all think? Switch to laptops or move uh, or reorient um, fans?
probably also use an exhaust fan here as opposed to two at the top. I don't know, I might, I might move one of these back here. We're still waiting for updates to install over here. It's just a cumulative update. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to shut down. It can, it can finish its updates later. Where's my cursor? Okay, so start, start. Oh. What are you doing? Uh, start button's not working. Um, can you have that happen? You can control, delete, and keyboard. Uh, run task manager. Show more and right click and restart the Windows Explorer. Then start works, yes. Okay, good. And shut down. Bombasso, you got a new Alienware. Okay, cool. so I can move it around easier. I wonder what happened to my other wireless dongle for the wireless keyboard. Also, how do we get to the front here to swap these around? Um, the screws are on this side and there's glass there. Well, it's probably not glass, it's probably... Yeah, it's acrylic, but anyway. Still have to get to that side. Okay, it feels like there's little plastic... I don't know what they're called, grommets or something? that you have to push in on in order to release the front. And there's one there. There's one up here. So you squeeze them together and push. Squeeze together and push. And is there another one? Ah, there we go. All right. And apparently this thing has a uh, RGB in it. Is it RGB? Yeah, must be. Okay. But that lets us turn these fans around. I did the paper test earlier, um, just to make sure what my eyes were telling me about the direction of the fans. And um, yeah, they're, everything's coming to the front of the case, and ideally you want to go into the back. Or typically, you want to go into the back. Doing it the way she did it, I mean, it would have worked. It's just, I think it's, it's better to have it go in the other way. Huh. 
<laughs> Who said hot dongle? Oh, of course it was. Of course it was Bombasa. Lol. Dongle. Oh no, screw down. Yeah. Thank you, magnet. Jerry. Jerry Kelly, how you doing? Maybe she she uh, lives in a cold area and uses PC as a heater. It would work as a heater either way. Um, but yeah, that's actually um, that's not uncommon for people to rely on their computers spitting out heat in the winter time to warm their rooms. We don't generally have that problem in Texas, at least not this part of Texas, but. I understand that is a that is a thing that people people do. Oh, so this is not that that common at this point. Um, but the way you, you I took this off, you have to squeeze these together as you pull, and you just go down and do one or the other. Okay, so just kind of get it approximately right and squeeze. Yeah. Okay. So those are good. Let's see. Uh, I'd also like to move this one to the back. So it's throwing air that way. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Do that. Dave, hi from Bristol, Wisconsin. Well, exactly. So <laughs> Dave, uh, Dave Hall in Bristol, Wisconsin can probably attest to that. that a hot computer can supplement the heating of your home. Okay. So this we're moving to the back. It's, it's got cables running also to this um, this hub. Uh, let's see. I might need to reroute the cable or cables. So it's these two coming through here. A little twist tie. These guys right here. We would want the fan to be going that direction out the back, and then we'll find a different way to route those cables over to the hub. The hub being there is unusual, but it's not really a problem. That's the keyboard, what I do? <laughs> Thank you for the confirmation, Dave. Absolutely, right? Why not? Okay, so, just like that. misplaced a fan screw. 
Where did it run off to? Where did it fall? Or should I just grab another one? Now, yeah, I'll, I'll grab another one. I'll find that one later. And screw. Excuse me. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing kind of up and around or something. It's not long enough to go to the back and all the way down here. So we're just gonna do this. Yeah, so the the up here fans are three pin um, RGB. The one here um, is four pin, and I don't think that's compatible with the three pin. Yes, it's plugged in, but I don't think it's I don't think it works. I may be wrong about that though. Okay, so down like that, up there, yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's turn it back on. So make sure it still works. Yeah, so the RGB on here doesn't work because this has a 4-pin RGB and the, the hubs and stuff only support 3-pin. And there's that green thing again. I think it's just the problem with this cable. I think I've probably worn out this cable. <laughs> to get it just right. Yeah, it's still not right. There we go. Yeah. Okay, but we're back in Windows. All the fans work. They're going the right direction now. Again, not that it was wrong, it's just it was unusual, but it, the way it is now, it, it'll bring air in from the front, clear it out the back, and out the top. You know, it's interesting, the, um, the codes on the motherboard are basically the same when I wasn't getting um, an image on the screen other than a black screen. So I'm thinking those codes weren't indicating a problem it was just that graphics card wasn't outputting video or it was but it was putting out a signal but no actual graphics okay let's get this thing shut down and we can move on to the two laptops I think the case was used as well. It um, it looks mainly clean, but it's got a couple of spots that had um, uh, dust, like in corners. So someone wiped it down good before they sold it. But like right here, there's like a line of dust there that no one came and wiped off before they sold it. But, yeah. Hopefully, I get to get to talk to her again and you know, find out the reasoning for buying parts this old. If they got a really good deal, I mean, they're still good parts. I mean, a 2700K 20, is still a four core processor. Uh, running it, I think, 3.5 gigahertz. So, not really slow, it's just, I wonder how much money, how much more money, if they'd spent it, they could have got something new and just 
better performing overall. I'm not a big fan of RGB either. Like you say, they create just extra cables you have to connect, more clutter. And regardless of uh, popular opinion, they do not make the computer faster. Today, apparently. There we go. Okay, and I'll, after I talk to them, they may want to get another graphics card for her for me to put in, but I think she could probably handle it. She, she made some unusual choices when she put it together, but it, uh, it would have worked if that graphics card had worked. Right. Let's start with the higher end one. I'm pretty sure this is the Core i7. Power. Oh, battery's dead. They brought one one charger, um, one AC adapter for for both laptops. What about now? Yeah, here it comes. Let's see, F2 or delete on an ASUS will probably get me into the BIOS. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, it didn't. <laughs> it's booting into Windows. And I had asked them to send me um, passwords or pins, but I don't think they did. At least I, I don't know if they did because I've had my phone strapped to my head for the last, what's it been? A little over an hour? Hour and fifteen minutes. Definitely got a hard drive in it though. It's if this had a solid state drive, it would be already at the desktop. Uh, Dave Hall, Lobo's. Uh... Oh wait a minute. Roger, how you doing? I think it's safe to come off the witness protection program. My enemies are either dead or in jail. That's good. Cool. Um, Roger Marine is. Uh, my friend Greg and I, I give him a hard time about being in the witness prote protection program because the the obvious fakeness of his name his actual name but that's good you've uh, you finally come to that conclusion now you can you can go out into the world again Dave Hall and it was a good machine it is one of my best and still going strong DDR4 memory i3 processor running Windows 11 four years old okay cool Oh, this thing is still booting into Windows. And I think the screen is dirty. Okay, we're finally... Okay, that was a really long time. This is this is used um, out in the field by... Uh, I forget what they do for a living, actually. But basically service people out in the field. And if it takes this thing this long to, to, to come up, that's not good. You can definitely use a solid-state drive upgrade. What I'm what I'm doing is um, checking to see how much space they're using, and that'll tell me what uh, capacity solid state drive they have to put in. I'll probably put in 500 gigabyte drives into both of them, unless they need more space than that, and then we'll go up to one terabyte. Okay, so we got a it's a black screen and there's a, a cursor on the screen, but we're still waiting for uh, the UI to come up. Otherwise, Let's see control. Control Shift Escape did nothing. Oh, it's doing Windows updates. Okay, and that looks like Windows 8, which I think this one came with. Oh, and I, I grabbed the uh, the Core i5 on accident. I, I I meant to get the Core i7. 
Not that it matters, but. I wonder if the other one has a charge on the battery. And I do have another power adapter, a, a universal one I can switch to. Mm, where is your power button? There it is. Oh, this one's powering on. F2, F2, F2. Yeah, BIOS, okay. So Core i7, 6500U, 12 gigabytes of memory, that's good. They probably don't really need more than that, but I'll look and see what the upgrade option is. With 12 megabytes of RAM, it's most likely four gigabytes plus eight gigabytes. With um, either the four or the eight being soldered onto the motherboard. So we could upgrade it, but it would might be more expensive than, than it is useful. All right, uh, main, uh, boot, and it just says Windows Boot Manager. It doesn't list the drive, I don't think. Okay, no, it does. It, it is a HGST. Uh, I'm not sure from that uh, string of letters and numbers what, uh, what capacity it is. It's probably a one gigabyte. Let me check my phone and see if they've texted me the, any passwords. But in the meantime, I can actually get out of that and see if it boots into Windows faster than this thing is. Dave, I do the same thing. Um, friends and family get uh, hand-me-down hand computers for the most part. Oh, this one booted into Windows much faster. And the battery's at half. Okay, Alfredo and password. Okay, yeah, let me check my phone. Uh, full cam. Yeah, there we go. Uh, no passwords or PIN numbers um, so far from the from the client. So I may do this a, a, di a different way than I typically would. Someone sent me their address for some reason. What is this? Oh, okay. Someone asking for help and give me their address. I have to call them back a little bit. Most likely four gigabytes being used for video. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, a lot of the times, you could be right though. Um, it does have a, a GeForce uh, 940M and it, it may have its own memory or it could be using some of the main RAM um, system memory for, for its video memory. Can happen either way. I don't remember off the top of my head if um, the 940M has discrete memory or if, it, or if it uses some of the system memory. The um, the Core i5 is still doing still doing updates. Definitely has a hard drive in it. Um, okay, but this one I'm going to let's see. Back to POV. You gonna switch? 
Just thinking about it. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna shut this thing off and open it up. What I'm gonna do, since I don't have the passwords or the PIN numbers, I'm gonna open them up, um, get the drives out of them, I'm gonna connect them to my diagnostic computer and see how much space they're using. And I can actually do the, the cloning uh, from the hard drive to the new solid state drives with my diagnostic computer. I really do want you to shut down. I really do. Cool. Might take a little while. This one's restarting. Shutting down? There we go. It took it like 20 seconds to get the hint of I wanted it shut down. back to the, to the head strap. Bring the microphone now a little bit closer. Get that radio voice going, right? Okay, so the i7 shut down, and we're waiting for this thing to finish its updates and then we'll shut it down. Alright, so this is a Q552U and I think I put the the model number in the, the description of the of the stream. It looks like hex screws. Of which I should have a couple here. Hopefully fit. That feels loose. What about you? Yeah, there we go. Missing a screw. This bottom piece should just come off and then the drive will be right there along with hopefully the RAM for possible upgrades. What do you think of a Gen 1 Lenovo P1? Will it buy? I don't know. Lenovo laptops, um, they're okay. Um, their support's good. Um, if you buy one, I would recommend getting an extended warranty because they're difficult to find replacement parts for. Okay, so that's, I think, all the screws. Let's see if this bottom comes off. Yeah. There's the drive. Uh, the RAM is probably under here. Does this come off? What is this? It's got, yeah. Yep, there's the RAM. So 8, gig, eight, gig, eight gigabytes stick of RAM, and it has looks like four gigabytes soldered to the motherboard right here. So, it's DDR3. So if they wanted a RAM upgrade, do I have some? Got a four, a four. An eight. Yeah, I'd have to get them a sixteen gigabyte stick of DDR3 in order to upgrade that. I'll give them that as an option. But let's continue with the um, solid state drive upgrade. Uh, okay, so this guy we also need to shut down. Power shut down. Looks like it's going to do it. Okay. Screwdriver. Swap her out for a little Phillips. Oh, I also need to change the torque on this thing. It's max right now. For laptops, I leave it on one, which is minimum torque. Four screws holding the drive in, 
and a little tab here you use to pull it over to disengage it from the connections. Yeah, one terabyte HGST drive. And this I'm just going to plug into my diagnostic computer. Okay, I can feel it spinning up. Alright, change the input here to HDMI. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the drive came up. Um, let's see. Switch. Switch this back to a tripod. There it is. Little smoke torque, uh, torque. I mean, the the the, the easiest way to uh, understand it is it's just the amount of force being put on something. So it's in in a screwdriver like this, it's like turning strength. And for laptops, you don't want it very strong because it it uh, too much torque on laptop screws that go into plastic or have go into nuts that are embedded in plastic can break things. And that's the reason for turning it down. Um, okay, let me see if I can get this. Orientated to where y'all can see. Uh, that's, I guess that's kind of okay. Move it this way. How about that? That's not bad. Looks in focus. All right. Uh, correct mouse. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So on my diagnostic computer, it showed up as an F drive. Uh, it is, it's one terabyte and they're actually using a lot. Um, so let's, let's get in here and see if we can see where the space is being taken up. So they would need at least a 500 gigabyte drive. It might be a good idea to upgrade them to a one terabyte, which I don't think I have. No. I've got 500s and 250s. So we may have to get them a, a one terabyte drive to, to finish this up. Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna try going in through Mini 2 data, data recovery. Whenever you plug a drive into another computer, um, you have to get permission to go into the, like users folder and things like that. Whereas a uh, uh, data recovery program usually can get in without doing that. You just point it at the drive, click open. It still takes a little while to get in, but, get in, but uh, then I can, I can kind of see where the space is being taken up. So it may turn out that they have just tons of old downloads they don't need anymore. Or maybe somebody was using it as a, an MP3 player at work and that kind of thing. And they have tons of MP3s or videos or something that really should be on there. We can free up the space and uh, go with a, a, a lower capacity drive, which saves them money. 
That being said, going from a 500 gigabyte drive to a one terabyte is only about $30 difference. So they may opt for the one terabyte just, uh, just cause. Andy93, how do I set up the two cameras together like that in one stream? Um, I use a program called OBS, which I think is one of the more popular programs, and you can you can connect as many cameras uh, to the computer as you want, and the OBS software allows you to switch between them, and you know, like move them around on screen and uh, things like that. But look up OBS setup on YouTube. You'll find lots of people with um, um, tutorials. And that's how I that's how I learned. Just I watched like five or six tutorials by you know different people, and from that I was able to learn what I needed in order to do this. So a little while ago, someone with the username USA asked about Acer. Um, I think my first laptop was an Acer, and it worked pretty well. Um, it was kind of low end, uh, but I, I bought it right when laptops became uh, cheap. Um, up until that point, it was like two thousand dollars for a laptop, and I think I bought the Acer um, for like three or four hundred bucks. The processor in it wasn't very good. It was a Pentium M, if I remember right. Um, so it was, it was okay at the time, but it didn't last very long, like performance wise, before it became too slow to be useful. Dave Hall, uh, Michael, doesn't all those desktop icons slow down the computer quite a bit? No, um, you can have as many icons on your desktop as you want. It doesn't make any difference to the speed of the computer. That may have been a thing a long time ago, like, like Windows 98, um, maybe even Windows XP a little bit, but no, that hasn't been, been a uh, performance issue for a very long time, if it ever was, I don't remember. Little smoke. Your first laptop was it was a compact. Was it before HP bought compact that that far back? Even on boot up, yes, even on boot up, um, the number of icons on your screen makes no difference. Ah. Uh, Little Smoke, does your Stream Deck still have the memes? Oh yeah, it does. Here they come. So this is from a few different things. This is gonna be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. My favorite. And here's another one. Done studies, Monica, you know. check disk Time. not it used works. today. Check disk is C H K D S K odd at a, a command prompt is is still still used, and you will see me run that um, if we uh, we actually do one of these solid state drive uh, upgrades from this drive to another. Yeah, check disk is uh, at a command prompt. You put C H K D S K space. Um, I usually put forward slash F for fix, space, and then the drive letter you're, you're wanting to check. And what it does is it checks the, um, the data on the drive, making sure everything's in order and there's not a problem. And that's important to do before you do a, um, a clone. Because most cloning software, if you try and clone a drive that has some corruption in the file system, it will just immediately fail as soon as it looks at the drive. And they all give you completely unhelpful <laughs> error messages. Uh, I think um, Macroom Reflect, the error message for it is error 9, which you then have to look up and figure out. You have to run check disk on it. Why would why would they wouldn't just tell you that um, instead of error 9 is, I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably do that, uh, Chris. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, I have also have this one. Dallas multipass. So that's that's a fun one. Um, 
Yeah, but I have I have ideas to do lots of different memes. Andy, did you did you hear my explanation of uh, OBS and doing a search for that about uh, connecting two cameras? That last one is from um, the Fifth Element, and it says they're getting on the space cruiser. Dave, I uh, recently tried using Macroom, but it failed due to my security settings. Any recommendations? Um, if you have your drive encrypted, it will usually fail. Um, the other thing is whenever you're doing a, a clone um, from one drive to another, especially if you're running off of the drive you're cloning from, uh, it's a good idea to turn off the antivirus. It's not 100% necessary, but it can make the process go smoother and be more likely to um, to work in the end. But yeah, it, disk encryption, either basic disk encryption that Windows Home does or um, the more thorough one, BitLocker, that Windows Pro does, you want to turn off before you, before you clone the drive. Otherwise, it'll take forever or it just won't work. And you can turn it back on after, after you uh, put the new drive in. Okay, we're getting close to seeing the files. Okay, so users. I'm going to users and Alfredo. And let's just check them. So there's 26 gigabytes of stuff on the desktop. Not much in documents. Like 13 gigabytes in downloads. What about music? Yeah, there's a bunch of music on here. Well, four gigabytes worth anyway. Pictures, lots of pictures. Okay, so I'm curious. Pictures. Yeah, it looks like camera uploads. Music. iTunes. So someone has their iTunes library on here. What about downloads? Uh, good amount of stuff. What is RS emulate? Back up. Four megabytes, fifty megabytes, eight gigabytes in a folder called RA. It's probably it probably has something to do with their work. Okay, but let's see. If we backed up or if we left everything on there. Um, so with a 500 gigabyte drive with everything on there, they would still have about 190 gigabytes of free space, which is probably fine for them. Um, I think I'll ask though, see if they want me to do a one terabyte. Oh, as far as the CHK DSK, so if you, if you click start, and uh, I already have links there you can probably see, but if you just click start and type in CMD, you want to right click on CMD and run as an administrator which will allow you to do the forward slash F for fix, but it's CHK DSK space forward slash F for fix, and then the F colon for the drive letter that we're going to check. Invalid perimeter, oh, parameter, sorry. I missed pressing the F for the forward slash fix. Okay, and then it'll just go through and look for problems and it'll fix them if they're there. But let's move on to the next one. Actually, let me check my let me check my camera, or not my yeah, it is, it is my camera. But let me check my uh, check my phone for a text message from the owner. Nope, still no text message. I will ask them for passwords. Passwords, please. 
He said they'd send them later. They, they may just be out and about doing work. They don't have time to send me passwords. <laughs> okay, but yeah, we can we can leave this one with its screws up here. I'm just kind of put it out of the way. And we can check out the other one. Okay, and I had shut this one down. Sorry, I think I bumped the microphone again. And these are standard Phillips screws. And these screws I'll put over here, so keep them separate. Gar Bear 123, Windows 11 is a headache, but I mean that Windows 10 blue screen of death is, well, death. Are you are you having trouble blue screen errors with a computer running Windows 10? Gar Bear? Because uh, blue screen of death errors can happen on any version of Windows. Okay. Just checking here. Looks like the bottom should come off of this thing. Yeah. There's little marks right here where uh, I think maybe somebody else got into the computer before. Okay, that's not working. Get a metal tool. I think I hear Abby. Oh, come on. Don't be a pain. started. This thing is really on there. It's tearing up my nylon tool. Hey, Abby, you can come in. I'm streaming. Hey. Hey. Is the video on? Yeah, the video's on. <laughs> Hang on a second. I, I got to talk to Abby. I'll be right back. She does not want to be on stream.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, let's see. Garbear. Uh, Little Smoke asks, should I upgrade to Windows 11? I mean, yeah, I mean, it... I, I, I haven't had too many problems with it. You can always... You have one week after upgrading to Windows 11 to go back to Windows 10 if you want to. And Garbear. Curse boot loops... Past three hours, trying to get a spare PC for the past three days. Factory restored it ever since then. Having boot loop error. Missing file? Okay. <coughs> so you're making a Windows 10 ISO to reinstall or otherwise repair. So, fresh install of Windows 10 Pro, okay. Yeah, that may do it. If you hit, if you still have problems after the fresh install of Windows, if it's still blue screens or if you have boot loops again, look at uh, the drive as being an issue. Also, RAM um, can cause that kind of thing. Uh, motherboards can as well. So, there's, there's lots of different possible causes for what you're experiencing at the moment. And this thing is just on here, frickin' ridiculous. Really, really clipped in. Guess I'm just keep going with this nylon. Dang, even then, sucker is not playing around. There we go. Let go? Yeah, okay. Okay, so battery, RAM, hard drive, Wi Fi, processors under there, that's the cooler. Let's see what we got here as far as RAM goes. Looks like four gigabytes on the motherboard. And <laughs> it's got a it's got a cover over it. Two gigabytes of RAM, so we could we could put in a, a four or an eight to upgrade this. So I guess if that's four gigabytes, this is two. It's got six gigabytes of RAM. That's kind of low. So yeah, most likely we will uh, we'll upgrade this. So it's two gigabytes of PC three L. L meaning low voltage. Computer probably needs the low voltage version of the RAM. Yeah, here's a here's a four gigabyte. Got a couple of four gigabytes. Eight gigabyte. Okay, I'm gonna put in the eight gigabyte, and I'll ask them about it later if I did the right thing. It's easy to swap back in. So when you're putting RAM in, there's a, a notch in the middle, kind of off center. This is very off center. Matches up with a piece of plastic there, so you can't put it in backwards. You put it at a 30 degree angle to the motherboard, wiggle it in until it stops, and then lay it down. So there's there's a RAM upgrade. Drive. Looks like four screws. This one doesn't have a pull tab, but it should just slide, yeah, like that. And there you go. So there's the drive. Um, Bombasso, me and Chris... <laughs> uh, who came in here? Oh, okay, Bombasso, you're there with, uh, with Roger Marine, a.k.a. Greg. The uh, Federal Witness Protection Program... Poster boy, huh? Didn't know laptop RAM gets installed like a M.2 SSD. It's similar. It, it is similar to an M.2 SSD installation. Yeah. Uh, 
So we need to see how much space this thing is using. So I need to actually switch back to my diagnostic computer and just aim this at it. All right, so the, the check disk got done. It says it made change, made corrections to the file system, so it needed to be run. So it's a good thing we did that. Uh, but I'm gonna close that and we'll see if we can eject the hard drive. So I'm right clicking on the little cat icon looking thing. I, just, I think it's supposed to be a mouse anyway, but if you right click on it, it'll show you all the drives you can eject. I'm gonna try ejecting that F drive and see if it, yeah. Safe to remove, cool. So you just come down here and you disconnect it. I'm gonna set y'all down for a second. Actually, y'all are on the head strap, so I can do that. All right, so disconnecting power and data. And this drive goes with that laptop. Connect data. Power. It's spinning. All right, so there we go. And it's also, it made it the F drive. It's pretty cool. All right, so 750 gigabyte drive, uh, 447 gigabytes free. So a 500 gigabyte drive would be fine for this. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, okay, let me switch this. Okay, so 500 gigabyte drive. Um, I have a crucial MX500 500 gigabyte drive. So I'm just gonna connect that to another um, SATA data cable. And SATA power on my diagnostic computer. There it's detected, but we do need to run chkdsk to make sure the file system on this one is okay. chkdsk space forward slash f space forward or space f colon. Access denied. Oh, I did not run command prompt with administrator privileges. Let's try that again. Uh, right click more admin okay chk dsk space four slash f space f colon enter all right hey zulu we'll give you to come even though you're what are you almost two hours uh two hours into the stream we uh we fixed a, a client's computer it was a it was a she built it out of old parts and it it, um, it gave a video signal but the video signal was black and it turned out that the graphics card in it uh, had failed or arrived failed um, I put the graphics card in my uh, diagnostic computer and it also didn't work there but we got the computer up and running uh, with Windows 10 and all its updates and we moved around some fans um, they were they were ejecting air out the top and front of the computer. And we basically moved things around so it came air came in the front and ejected it out the back and out the top. Yes, it's always good to have an integrated GPU for that kind of thing. And I imagine they'll, they'll send back this graphics card that didn't work and get another one from wherever they bought it from. All right, little smoke. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bedtime. Oh yeah. You gotta get your uh, gotta get your sleep in, right?
Uh, Garbear, do you know how to repair the power port or even a M.2 port repair on my Nitro 5? Won't take an extra NVMe for some reason. I also have a few others that have problems like internal problems. Isn't Nitro 5 the brand of um, a solid state drive? Is that what you're asking? Or is a Nitro 5 a laptop? Either way, I don't know how to repair them. Um, both can be repaired. You just you you need equipment I don't have, <laughs> and vision that I don't have either. My my eyes are I don't think good enough for um, micro soldering. Not that I have any interest in it anyway. And Dalibor. I have one question. I bought pre-built PC Ryzen 5 5600G with a RTX 3060 12 gigabyte RAM, and I only have 200 FPS in CS:GO on low settings. Any help? Hmm. That does sound a little bit low for CS:GO, doesn't it? The first thing I would check is um, is temperatures temperatures of the CPU and temperatures of the graphics card make sure they're not going too high maybe improve the cooling of one or the other could help another thing is whenever you you have that okay it's a pre-built so it came with a fresh copy of Windows hmm Well, it sounds like you just bought it recently and it's probably still under warranty. Give a call to the manufacturer and see what they say. They may have uh, they may have an idea and it's it's if you're not getting the performance that you paid for, uh, it's their responsibility to uh, to make it right. And especially if you bought it less than um, like 30 days ago, whatever the return period is, because you can just send it back if they don't help you. But that would be my my initial thing to check is um, temperatures. And you can do that with um, if you do a Google search for HW Info 64 download, you'll you'll find it. Um, it's a program that uh, will show you the uh, the temperatures that uh, the GPU and the CPU are running at. But that being said, if you press um, Control Shift Escape on Windows, it'll bring up Task Manager, which will initially look like this, small. You click More Details and go over to Performance and scroll down to the GPU, it will tell you the um, the temperature it's running at. Um, you want it less than 70 degrees C, ideally. If it's up around 80, um, that's indica indicative of a problem. But it's it's important to also look at the um, the, the frequency it's running at, as well as the um, the temperature, because if it's like if it's like 70 75 degrees C, it may be getting to that temperature by um, if the cooling isn't right, it may be lowering the speed that the graphics uh, chip is running at in order to keep it at that level. But the lower uh, speed in gigahertz that the graphics is running at could lead to the, the lower FPS. And you can check the same thing in, in HW Info for the, um, the, CP, uh, the CPU as well. Dave Hall, do you use SFC and DIS commands very much? I have not found them useful. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Anytime I, anytime there's a problem with Windows and I'm trying to figure it out, if I run those commands, even if it says there's a problem and it fixed it, it doesn't actually fix the problem. <laughs> I usually have to uh, do an in-place upgrade of, uh, of Windows. Which you can do as long as the computer is uh, is in Windows. You can just um, plug in a, a USB flash drive with a copy of Windows on it, run setup.exe, and it will uh, basically do a in-place upgrade. So it keeps all your stuff, all your programs, but it fixes problems with Windows. So I, I found that to be more useful than, than running those commands. I don't think I've I've yet seen one of those commands fix a problem I'm trying to you know, trying to solve. Nappy G, uh, fans aren't working right on PC. They were working fine before I changed the power supply. 
don't see new cords for the new power supply. Your fans maybe have been, have been getting their power from the old power supply through um, a SATA or a Molex connection and maybe you just didn't reconnect that when you replaced the power supply. So go back into the computer, shut it down of course, open it up and look for, um, you can actually trace the, uh, the fan cables from the fans to where they go. Make sure they're all plugged into um, either the motherboard, the power supply, or a hub that is then the hub connected to the power supply or the motherboard. But you, you most likely just missed reconnecting something. Okay, so it got done. Uh, it says it made corrections to the file system. So we are good to um, do the, uh, the solid state drive. Oh, I already connected it. Okay. So I am going to okay close out of that, close out of that, and we don't need the command prompt anymore. I'm gonna run Macroom Reflect. And this is a free software. You can you can get it from if you do a Google search for Mac Macrium Reflect free, you'll find it. And that's the spelling of it right there. Macrium Reflect. I'm not gonna let it do an upgrade, I don't care. Um, I'll do that some other time. Uh, okay, so we're finding the client's hard drive, which is the Toshiba 750 gigabyte. We're clicking clone this disk. Select a disk to clone two, and I'm choosing the crucial 500 gigabyte solid state drive. We'll do copy partitions and shrink or extend to fill the, t fill the target. Good. So <clears throat> the C drive, which is this uh, this fourth one here, is labeled OS. It's going to be about half full, so that's going to give them plenty of free space. After I talk to them, if they tell me no, I want a um, a one terabyte drive, I can just do this again. It's not a big deal. But finish and OK. And that will get going. Yep. Yeah, Nappy, you'll 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 find it. Just go in there and look around. You'll 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 find a, a cable or maybe two that's just not connected to anything. Connect it up to the power supply. And uh, your fans will probably start working, most likely. So this is probably gonna take like 45 minutes to get done, um, maybe longer. Uh, what else can we do? I haven't heard a, a text come in, but let me see. Uh, unlock that, and... Oh, come on. I'm messing with my phone, so y'all might, might lose the video while I do this. Okay. All right. Well, I do have I do have the passwords. So let me ask about the the solid state drive. This is the client uh, that brought me the two laptops. so I can use my phone properly.
Okay, just filling them in on, you know, what I found and what I've done so so far and, you know, asking if that's okay. So we could put more RAM than 12 in the Core i5, but it would be pretty expensive because we basically, we'd be buying it a DDR3 um, 16 gigabyte stick of RAM, which we can actually check that. Uh, I think we're on the center screen. So on for DDR three L for a laptop, so damn sixteen gigabyte stick. How much would that be? Forty bucks. The thing is, going going from 12 gigabytes to 20 gigabytes, they probably wouldn't feel that. But it's 40 bucks, so maybe they'll say, "Yeah, go ahead and do it." It's only 40 bucks. You know, once since they're making it as best it can be, why not spend the extra money? Then they 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 may have that uh, have that way of thinking, which is I mean completely legitimate, really. Um, okay, let me switch back to camera. You work, I think. Pretty sure that worked. Well, we've been going for two hours and ten minutes. Really, other than um, doing the same process again and putting everything back together, there's not much else to show you. And it looks like this is going to take a long time. It it's it's at one percent of overall progress right now. It's doing uh, the uh, MFT file. And it's at 74%. And it's been doing that for the last 10 minutes. It's going to take a long time. And this isn't even copying all the data. This is copying a tiny file that like relates to the data. So ugh, it's going to be a while. And th this slowness is because of the hard drive. If we were if we were transferring from a solid state drive to a solid state drive, like a, a larger capacity drive upgrade, um, it would be like 25% done at this point of the whole process. So just shows you how slow hard drives are. Uh, oh, Mike. Hello from uh, Montreal, Canada. Mike says, cool. We're in Austin, Texas, and we're hoping for more rain, but not too much. Uh, let's see, what specs is your diagnostic computer the diagnostic computer that's a good question let's let's uh y'all can actually see this um so this is the diagnostic computer that y'all are looking at or no i did not switch back to pov sorry okay pov diagnostic computer so it's at 92 percent just copying the mft file it's going to take forever um right click on start and go to system so it is a Xeon computer, I'm sorry, Xeon processor. It's a X5670. It's a six core. It's running at four gigahertz. It's not. It's not uh, reporting it correctly there. Um, Twelve gigabytes of RAM, and for drives, I have a 500 gigabyte um, solid state drive, and a RAID. I think it's RAID five. Um, it's uh, it's three two terabyte. Um, two and a half inch drives, um, making a, a one point, oh, sorry, one point eight terabyte um, backup drive. I, I typically put clients' files there as I'm working on their drives, if I want to keep them safe. And I usually do that if I think their drive is failing or it's definitely failing. I, I recover everything to that drive. But yeah, it's it's an old computer. Um, I think I said earlier I, I initially built the system that the motherboard came from back in two thousand nine. It actually might be a little bit older than that, come to think of it. It's closer to 2007, 2008. Mm, excuse me. Dave Hall says, Michael, great show. I'm glad I found your channel. I'm hooked. Thanks. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping y'all are enjoying this and getting some useful information from it. Hmm. But I think we we probably I mean I don't have 
other than like waiting for that to finish and doing the exact same process on the other one and then putting them all together, I don't have anything to show you all. Plus, I'm still waiting to hear back from the, the client about um, what they want to do with uh, the drives and the RAM for sure. I think I've made the correct decision, but we'll see what they say. Stuarty, hell sir, I just wanted to buy a gaming PC specs, a Ryzen 5 5600, Asus Prime B450 uh, motherboard, but you also mentioned the Strix, oh, okay, a Strix um, 50, or sorry, 6750 XT 12GB, uh, is that PC great for gaming, can you help me about it? I mean, that's, I mean, that's a good processor, I think, was that a 6-core processor, and a, um, relatively high-end graphics card from uh, from Asus um, Radeon graphics card. I mean, yeah. How, how much are you paying for it? I would say that would, that could run any game at uh, 1440p at, at a pretty high frame rate. So, I mean, that's that's a nice system. If you're paying around fifteen hundred bucks for that, it's a good deal. Of course, there's there's more information in there. I would need to know for sure, but I'm thinking fifteen hundred. What? How how much uh, how much is it, Storyty? Uh, K Cordius Technology. I have Dell Workstation Tower T thirty six hundred used for diagnostic myself. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the Dell workstation computers are nice. I'm paying 18,000 Turkish Lira. Converts to $989. Yeah, that's, I mean, that that's good. Uh, pay attention to the drive that's in it and the amount of RAM, though. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that sounds like a good deal. What what uh, does it have a solid state drive? What's the capacity? Is it M.2 or two and a half inch drive? And how much RAM? The other questions I would have on that. Okay, so yeah, the, um, can I send a link to the computer? Um, Storyty, I, I actually do need to go, though. Um, aside from not being able to show y'all too much more other than this, plus the uh, the long lead time and not having uh, heard back from the client yet, um, I've got some, uh, some other stuff i got to get to that I can't do on stream. Um... Uh, but Stuarty, if you want to come back when I do another live stream, that'd be good. Um, otherwise, um, you can find a direct, uh, you can find my email address. If you go to the channel, um, my YouTube channel here, go to About Me, um, there's a link there where you can click and it'll show you my uh, my email address if you want to send it. <laughs> Bone boss, so don't go. I miss you. I miss you too. We got to hang out. But I'm glad you and, uh, you and Greg are getting together. But yeah, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out and chatting and stuff and um, suggestions and everything. Next live stream, uh, I don't have a set schedule for live streams. I do live streams usually in the morning or early afternoon whenever I have something to show. Um, and a lot of times I, I, I work out of the house or if it's, it's just not things I can show. Um, but uh, anytime I can and I have the time and I've got something to show, I do a live stream. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming and hanging out. They've done studies, you know. Sixty percent of the time, it works every time.